when you set that those temporal pleasures aside or sin for the Spirit of God, now you have this joy and this peace that surpasses all understanding, Mike, and those temporal pleasures don't mean anything anymore. And the Satan has done such a wonderful job of tempting and seducing with those temporal pleasures. This is the only way to live, only way to have fun. Where Jesus said, no, come out from among them, be separate, be ye holy, and, and walk in his kingdom, and they're like night and day, aren't they, Mike? They sure are. Uh, and, and even when Jesus was around, right after that, when he rose from the dead and 500 people saw him, they were alive when the New Testament was written. So today, even today, and starting back then, there were a lot of counterfeits, counterfeit Jesuses, false religions, Christ consciousnesses. I was into Eastern religion. I believe that was true. I read the Bhagavadim, the Bhagavad Gita, Upanishads. I meditated a lot. I believe that stuff. But then God opened my eyes to see that it wasn't true because the gurus say Jesus is another guru and guru. And Jesus said, don't believe any who came before me. Don't believe anybody that's going to come after me. So that lets out all the other gurus and some other things he said. And as I studied it, I saw there was no basis for my belief anywhere near a firm, as firm a basis as fulfilled prophecy in the Bible. The only thing they had was they can tell the past because they can tell of things that happened hundreds of years ago because the demons have been alive since then. <laughs> when you demonize, when, you, when they demonize somebody, they can share that through, like, you know, Shirley MacLaine and the Dalai Lama, that's how well, they so pick him. Well, so history books, Mike. Yeah, but, but that's quite different. That's quite different. When you say, hey, I buried something 200 years ago. If you go there, you'll dig it up and find it. That's pretty credible. And Timothy Leary's great pal, Richard Alpert, he was the head of the psychology department at Harvard University. That's what convinced him. That's what convinced me that Eastern religion was true, too. I mean, it convinced him because he went out to India and gave some acid to a guru. The guru popped the acid, and, and Albert saw no change in, in this guru. He gave him a ton of acid, enough he said to knock out an elephant. And there was no, he stayed with him for hours. The guy didn't change, blink an eye. And the next morning, he told Albert, about his dream that he had the night before, and he told him about something his mom had told him that no one knew. And that's what happened to Shirley MacLaine. And demons can do that, and that's very convincing. It really is. Well, it, it is, Mike, but can they uh, predict the future? No, not 100% accurately, no way, not even close. Again, there's the counterfeit. Yeah. Uh, Satan's, his, he's always counterfeiting truth. And so what, what Jesus says, Satan does the exact opposite. Yeah, he wants to take the place of God and be worshipped instead of God. And then false religions, I mean, you, you came out of Roman Catholicism. Yes. You know, they call that Christianity, but is it? No, it's, it's not Christianity. And if you look at it and examine it and search it and, and compare it to the Holy Word of God, you'll find that it is of man and, and of the devil and, and not, a, not of the Lord. Yeah, we've shown some programs. We've shown apparitions of Mary giving statements through priests that contradict the Bible. And God says he doesn't contradict himself. You know, Mike, I, I got a question for you. You said God opened my eyes. How did he and why did he open your eyes? Why not this person's eyes? Why not to Ozzy Osbourne's eyes? Why did he open your eyes? Or what was the reason behind him opening your eyes? Well, God said it's, it's all of grace and it's not what we do, but I, you know, down deep, you know, there's another scripture which says, uh, you shall seek me and find me when you search for me with all your heart. Mm. And, and this, when you look at life around you and you see this world and the mess it is, and you know, Iran claiming that it's going to have a nuclear weapon someday and Satan's America and he's going to, he's not too fond of America and he doesn't care about this or that and nuclear war and you worry about that and death and you see crime. In, in all the world and wars, you have to wonder, is there a meaning to life? Is there something better? Is there something, and do, does your life go on? So it's just that verse, you shall seek me and find me, God says, when you search for me with all your heart. He wants us just to look around us and say, is there something else? So even though you were in the midst of your Eastern mysticism, seeking truth, and I was in, steeped in my Catholicism, which I was raised in, the, the, the bottom line issue is we were still seeking truth in all that. We weren't sold on it. We were still seeking. We still wanted to know truth, and because with our, our heart we wanted to know truth, then the Lord 
because we sought it with everything we and, had. And there's nothing good in us or you or anybody else, God says, because he's made us. He's given us the ability to seek. He even gives us the clues, you know, when you look at the birth of a baby. I mean, it's a miracle. Well, and, but you know, Mike, he also wrote it on everybody's mind, conscience. You know, conscience meaning with knowledge. So the, the truth is there for those who are truly seeking. Um, no matter what condition you're in, um, except those who flat out blasphemy him, which, which God says is the only unpardonable sin, is to blasphemy the Holy Spirit. To tell him to take a hike. I don't want you. I'm, I'm you know, as, as as it apparently it looks like Marilyn Manson might be doing, but but even DMX, um, even Eric Clapton, even even Jay, even Mike. No matter what condition we're in, if we just turn and say, you know what, I just want to know. I want to know the truth. What is my whole purpose? Who are you? If you are God, then show me. Right, and he's not saying do it once or twice. Say, seek him with your whole heart. All That's a consistent mm -hmm. search to understand and see truth. And God will fulfill his promise because he's not a liar. Yeah, and, and you need to accept the fact that you're living a life of sin. Sin is keeping you from him. Well, we, well we've all coveted, we've all lied. Even if, if you're a good person, you think you are, everybody you know, that, that's honest that I've met admits that they've coveted things, they've mm -hmm. lied, and God won't ha take any of that in his kingdom. He's too and, holy. But he, he will change us, all of us, if we admit that we're messed up. And, and he paid the price for us, and, and that is through the sacrifice of his blood. And you know what's interesting about blood, Mike? Why, I, 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 I tried to figure out why God chose a blood sacrifice for life. Look at what does blood do when, when you're injured in this part of your arm or this part of your toe that those blood cells go and heal there's healing in that blood very interesting connection there between life is in the blood and actually what blood truly does for a human being in, in those cells you know reproducing and constantly giving life to those areas that are dead in your body that's that's an interesting uh, fact, I guess. Very much so. And, and, and God being so cool, you know, and using that blood to give life gave us this actual blood that reproduces and gives life. Isn't that's just so cool to me, so deep. Yeah, he, he, God said, for the life of the flesh is in the blood, and I've given it to you upon the altar to make an atonement for your hmm. souls and for your sin. And, you know, that's right. I never thought tied it to healing that way. Isn't that uh, interesting? You know, and I, you know, I've thought often about that verse, you know, the life of the flesh is in the blood. Life and, is in the <clears> blood. <throat> and, and what does blood do? And, you know, it's an interesting thing. 700 and something years before Jesus was born, in Isaiah 53, it prophesies that someone is going to come and die for the sins of mankind. And in verse 52.10, Isaiah 52.10, it says that he will startle or sprinkle many nations. Some translations say startle, but that Hebrew word naza means to sprinkle, and it's almost always used for a sprinkling of blood for purification. It's, it's used, Moses was commanded to sprinkle mm -hmm. all the garments and, and the Torah and everything with blood. And, and that word it says this person's gonna sprinkle with blood many nations many people and then it goes on to say you know who you know the arm of the Lord is being revealed it says you know who has believed our report and to whom is the arm of the Lord revealed and other verses show that the arm of the Lord is going to bring salvation so all Jews knew that this was bring salvation and then it says this person is going to die but most of the Jews missed it most of my fellow Jews missed that Jesus was the Messiah had to die first but others recognized it right away. John the Baptist said, when he first saw Jesus come to him, Behold the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. And the only way a lamb can take away sin is by dying. The Passover lamb, for instance. And, and they had to be unblemished, too, right. Mike. And right. that's why Jesus was without sin. He was that unblemished lamb, that blood sacrifice for the sins of the world, not just the sins of Israel as the priests, Levitical priests, performed in the Old Testament for Israel. Here come the, the, the ultimate lamb 
for you and me and, and everyone out there. Prophesied 700 something years before he showed up. In, in the town, um, the date. And you know, it's in the Dead Sea Scrolls. For those who are, in, who are uh, Muslim, um, you're taught that the Bibles which changed around the time of Muhammad's around 600 AD. But we've got actual copies that say all this stuff 600, 800, 900 years. The actual copies, 700 years before Muhammad was born.